let's start off this morning. What made Steve Jobs and Thomas Edison successful innovators? Why do Apple and eBay thrive? And more importantly, can you ape their success? Well, that's just some of the questions addressed in a new book called The Innovator's DNA. And to tell us the conclusions of the book, I'm delighted to be joined in studio by Alan Jordan, sales director of BookBuzz. Morning, Alan. Morning, Ian. The Innovator's DNA by Jeff Dyer, Hal Gregerson and Clayton Christensen. Are you born a genius or can it be learned? Yeah, well, the boys say it can be learned, and I suppose they spent eight years of research putting this book together, uh, taking information from over 500 innovators, 5,000 execs, and from 75 countries. Um, do you know, it, it summarized well early on in, in the book, where they put together a nice little model, which kind of shows that creative innovators, they have, first of all, the courage to innovate, as shown in their ability to change the status quo and take risks, but also they incorporate the behavioural skills, and this is the learned behaviour of observing, questioning, networking and experimenting, and they, they lead to associative thinking that ultimately leads to innovative business ideas. Now, if you just bear with me, I'm going to get a little bit cerebral for you for this hour of the morning, just to give you an idea how that works. The brain doesn't store information as a dictionary alphabetically, like with theatre under the letter T. So theatres can be associated with Broadway, ice cream at the intermission, or anxiety because as a kid you remember the time you fell off the um, the stage at school play. So the more diverse knowledge the brain possesses, the more connections it can make given fresh inputs of knowledge. And then these fresh inputs trigger the associations that lead to novel ideas. So say, for example, something that we're passionate about. When you take new ideas, fresh thinking from business books, what they is, they act as a trigger mechanism that fires your imagination, that then leads to other unexpected associations that act as powerful and essential supplements of data. So that helps you work through a problem and are the critical creative tools that help generate strategic insights. So say, for example, remember when we reviewed Nicholas Carr's book, The Shallows, and we said we're all turning into pancake people, we're spread wide and thin and no depth. Here, you create a wider web of neural connections, and you create an associating muscle for innovative thinking. Now, that sounds rather complicated. Doesn't it a bit? <laughs> uh, well, according to the authors, there are five key skills that make good innovators stand out. Yeah, and of course, some of them would seem uh, quite uh, simple and ordinary, like associating. So therefore, you uh, you lose a lot of your associating skills around questioning. So all of all of the top innovators I looked at were always questioning, asking questions, observing with intensity, uh, noting down what was happening, using journals, uh, networking, connecting with people from different groups outside of business, so stimulating their whole mindset. So say, for example, books we would have done around uh, Mavericks at Work, uh, trend spotting, uh, demand, this allows them, the innovators to develop uh, it hassle maps, but then also to come up with innovative ideas around you know pricing, around commodity, and around developing different products. And what the book is saying is that you know you aren't necessarily born with this. They did some survey on 25 sets of twins. I always imagine these twins in some type of laboratory and separated at birth, but no twins were hurt in the making of this book. And the analysis then looks and says, no, no, 20, 25% of it you can be born with, but the rest of it are these learned behaviours. I gave two examples there, as a Steve Jobs of Apple and Thomas Edison, you know, but going back, you know, a century between them almost, but they are surely standout people. Well, no, you see, yeah, they are standout people, absolutely. And if you read Steve uh, Jobs' book, The 600 Tom, but really, if you look at where he got his ideas from, it was having a questioning mind, it was being inquisitive, it was drawing associations, it was being an actual networker. I mean, Edison, okay, I, I haven't failed, I've just found 10,000 ways that do not work. So a lot of the innovators they looked at had a lot of commonality, and it's a bit like, remember those that 10,000 hours of practice? What these authors are saying after eight years research, you know what, if you practice these skill sets of networking, experimenting, observing, and questioning, and actually, in fact, they say, listen, you need to act more like a four-year-old. Just keep on asking questions, and that'll help you get there to more innovative products and services. Is it practical enough, the book, for uh, people out there to pick up some tips? Yeah, it, it is. The only thing I found in, uh, interesting was, despite the eight years of research, a lot of the companies of the brand names that we just spoke about, so, for example, you'll see all of the authors from Steve Jobs or Jeff Bezos from Amazon, Michael Dell, Howard Schultz from Starbucks, no brick countries, so Brazil, Russia, in the China, Korea, and I don't see any women innovators out there. So I don't know what that means. Either they're not creative enough, they're not thinking enough, or uh, surely not. I don't think the authors would well, have. Uh... Probably, I'm sure Ivan and Chris will have something to say on that later.
Uh, just just looking, I mean, these type of books, I mean, innovation, people always say, you know, you look at Malcolm Gladwell and the Outliers and you say, look, at the 10,000 hours of practice. But for anybody out there, say, look, you know, is there anybody really that at, at, a, at a lower level, not the big American technology companies, but at a lower level, you know, the, the local company doing well? Do they give any practical examples like that? Uh, the research... It doesn't churn through because they tried to develop an innovation premium around the top businesses. They were saying in the book that, yes, there were uh, companies that had those particular skill sets. And I suppose one of the things that the book argues about is that, look, the image of, of you know, creativity is all very well for intellectuals and bohemians sitting around on beanbags, but it takes an innovator to get things done. So there's a practicality and an execution side to a lot of the things, which is really very important in business. Okay, Alan Jordan, Sales Director of BookBuzz, thank you very much for joining us this morning in that book, The Innovator's DNA by Jeff Dyer, Hal Gregerson and Clayton Christensen. We'll stick the details on our website later on. Well, up.